the market structure is like totally broken, totally broken. And we're not spending any time. The way stocks trade is very unnatural. That was Omega Advisors Chairman Leon Cooperman at today's CNBC FA Summit with a warning for investors. So is the market actually broken? Let's bring in Joe Moglia, former chairman and CEO of TD Ameritrade. Joe, is that an old school way of looking at what's happening with retail and the meme trading or is he right? Mimi. Mimi. Yeah, Sarah, I, I don't think Mimi. I don't think it I don't think it's an old school way to look at it. I can appreciate what's gone on here. You go back to the GME thing. I mean, the retail, you gotta give retail leadership tremendous credit for putting on a trade that was incredible that wind up having tremendous pressure on major institutional investors that are really smart and have great reputations. So the, the SEC is getting involved with all this. And my guess is going to take quite a while for them to, to, to look at every trade, everything that's taken place. If there's an irregularity, I think they'll address that. I think the, the world's changing, the world's changing as, as we speak. And, uh, and retail investors, frankly, have taken advantage of that. So is there anything broken about the market structure? I don't know if there's something about the market structure. I think there's something that, that is very severely missing, though. And, and if we want to go back to the game, game stock thing, if any one of us put on that trade, let's say at 8, and it goes to 16, then 26, then 36, 40, when are you supposed to trend? So we've got people telling you when to do a trade, but when are you supposed to manage your risk? In 1990s, very, very similar to what we've had today with the day trader. Well, the 1990s blew up. In March 2000, 2003, when the dot com bubble burst, and 90% of those day traders went out of business. There's a decent possibility that happened to the people we have today. So I, I think for the, for the retail leadership that's helping uh, retail investors put on these trades, they've got to take some more responsibility for it, giving them a better education with regard to risk management. What about short squeezes? Uh, do you think there needs to be slightly updated regulation uh, around that, or is this all fair game? Yeah, well, for now, I think so. I think that's worth at the very least looking at. You now, should there be an uptick rule? Should there be maybe a little bit of a longer holding period? I think it's fair. To, I have no doubt that the regulators will take a look at that. And I'd frankly be surprised if they don't come up with something along those lines. So I think it's fair game. I actually wanted to ask you, Joe, about SPACs, because I know you're very plugged into that world. You've, you've done yeah. your own SPAC. What, what's happening now? Because a lot of the momentum has cooled off. The frenzy has cooled off. Has there been a change in who has leverage, the SPAC or the target, given the time pressure some of these companies are facing to acquire well, I think, uh, startups? Yeah, yeah, sir, uh, yeah no, sir, I think what's going on is there are just too many SPACs. You've got so many, and you don't have enough qualified targets to be able to bring to market. So what happens, in my opinion, I think many, many, many of the SPACs won't make it. And I think, in general, the retail investor should not be invested in SPAC. You should wait until you find out who the target is and then evaluate the target and move forward. And, uh, I mean, I feel great about OPFI, which is the target that we're involved with. But if you look at the number of SPACs, there's like 550, 600 of them. There's only 110 that have been announced. There's only three that have been profitable in the last three years. OPFI is one of those. That's the one we're involved with. And there's only one that has a 50% revenue tag for the last five years. That's OPFI. So I think while things are not going well in the SPAC world, I think there are definitely some diamonds in the rough that you can take advantage of. But you got to pay attention and do your homework. Joe, uh, you, you mentioned uh, moments ago that there were some similarities you're seeing to, to the late 90s. But, but yeah. I don't think I'm, you're going uh, as far as saying uh, that, that you think we're about to have an, a massive blow up of overall equity markets, right? No, well, for you're talking about what happens in the market. I'm talking about what happens to the day trader. So the day traders in the 90s did phenomenal because of the Internet. That's why they did phenomenal. Now they're doing phenomenal because of zero commission trades, incredible technology, and the ability to move very, very, very quickly. But in both cases, we just had, we're having a five-year bull run so far. We had about a five-year bull run in the 1990s. I'm not predicting a market collapse. I'm just saying when the market turns, that somebody's got to be looking out for these individual investors because it's going to be painful. Joe, great to see you as always. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Wilford. Thanks, Sarah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.